There lives inside each of us a genius, a power, a capacity, an untapped potential. That possibility is seen in the shadows of our past achievements, the mist of our dreams and aspirations. So what I'm saying, or what came through me then, was that there's this huge potential inside of us and we can catch a glimpse of that potential, not by watching an Olympic gymnast or an Olympic swimmer or someone else in the Olympics, or observing others we know who've been extremely successful, but by rather by looking at our own past achievements and then also thinking about those things we dream of achieving. Ralph Waldo, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, if God gave you the ability to imagine it, he gave you at the self same time the ability to achieve it. So there is that, that possibility that seems, that, that seems to be trying to come through us. And, we, and then it goes on to say, that paragraph went on to say, we tap our potential by gaining confidence from our successes. It's, it's, and as I understand it, it's, it's learning to celebrate our successes. It's learning to acknowledge our successes. It's learning to accept credit for our successes. And it's not just noticing the success. This is really one of the big tricks in all this, in my view. It's understanding the quality that I used that helped me succeed. The quality I drew upon that helped me accomplish whatever it is that I accomplished. Now I'll just pause here and say, would you say the average person sells themselves long or short? The average person sells, tends to sell themselves long or short? short I agree with you. I agree with you completely. And sometimes, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, those people who have the most bravado, you know the ones I'm talking about probably now, who make the most noise, who brag the most, who drive you crazy with some of their constant up, upping you, you know, <laughs> are the ones who lack the most confidence. They mean that they don't act like it, that they're the ones who really lack the most true, genuine confidence. So accepting, uh, celebrating our successes, accepting responsibility for our present. Now, I love a Pogo, and I've, I've written about Pogo in some of my writings. And you remember Pogo said, this is another fine mess I got me into, right? So it's, it's that, that's that, sec, that second element there, accepting responsibility for my present. Now, by the way, if I'm a victim, and we've got this little model up here on victim and accountability, we call it the victim accountability model, and uh, this is the victim model right here. And this, sorry, this is the victim model right here. This is the accountability model right here. If I say... When something doesn't go the way I wanted it to in my life, in my day, in my week, in my month, in my quarter, in my year, in my decade, in my life, something that didn't go right for me, if I say they did it to me, how do I get out of that? What's the past forward for me if they did it to me, whoever they are? my parents or my boss or the society as a whole or you know, whoever it was. What's my path forward if they did it to me? Well, the answer is I've got to wait for them, right, to bail me out, to come and save me, to come and uh, fix me or whatever, however is the right way of expressing that. On the other hand, if I say, like Pogo, this is another fine mess I got me into, who do I have to wait for to get me out? Well, the answer is no one, right? No one. If I got me into it, I can get me out of it. It may take, I'll have to probably change some of the ways I've been operating. I'll have to approach things differently, but I can get me out of it. That's really basically what this model says. I'll come to the last point in that paragraph in just a minute. <clears throat> but this paragraph says, that uh, when you're in a situation, this is a success situation, whether it's a success or failure, uh, you, if you deny that you had any part in it, not my fault, you just can't find good people anymore. Not my fault, the office didn't set it up right. 
Not my fault I wasn't dispatched correctly. Not my fault the customer didn't tell us what they wanted. If they would just figure out what, you, you're with me there. So I deny it, I'm a victim. I get to, right, blame others. And by the way, what, what happened to my learning in this scenario? Of course, the answer is zero. You take it the other direction. Over here, self-assessment. What did I do? What could I have done differently? Here I am without the right tools. Here I am not prepared. Here I am running all over town when I could go in one direction or whatever it is. That's my self-assessment. What could I have done differently there? So now I'm holding myself accountable. I accept some responsibility and shoot, it doesn't, well, this, this learn should really be down here. Now, this, these are the two really key points. In this scenario, denial, victim, blame, no learning, a similar situation comes up. Am I prepared? Well, of course not. I have zero preparation because I didn't learn. On the other hand, through healthy self-assessment, holding myself accountable, accepting some responsibility, a similar situation comes up. And what do I say? Oh, I can handle this. Yeah, I can handle this. I don't need anybody to get me out. Now I'm prepared because I've learned, and that learn really should have been down here, uh, versus the self-doubt. That's the power of accepting um, accountability for my present. And then the last one is committing to my goals, committing to goals. I've coached not hundreds, thousands, at least, I don't know, 10,000, 20, a lot of people, individuals, individual coaching on setting goals. And there's some people here tonight who've known me a long time and they'll say some things about this in a minute. And I, I've, learned, I've earned the right to say that most people have a difficult time setting goals. They just do. And they, so they want to say, I'll try and I hope and I'd like to. And the first thing that we want to do is talk about they have to be realistic. And, Understand that every significant achievement in human history was first thought to be what? Impossible. Impossible. Every significant achievement in human history, and you check it out, was first thought to be impossible. So I believe the goal should be something that we are willing to commit to and something that we can imagine achieving. When you engage around that goal, if you imagine failure, don't, that's too high for you, right? Just too high for you right now. Make it just as high as you can possibly imagine it. Achieve something, then you can set a little higher. I have a real resistance around letting, letting uh, my guideline be realistic if I'm setting goals. I think our goal should be stretchingly believable. Stretchingly believable. To whom? To you. Not to me. I don't need to believe it. You need to believe it. And believe me. By the way, I'll have an easier time believing your goal for you than you'll have sometimes believing your goal for you. That's why we need good, strong, hearty support people in our lives. Right? That's why the, the best marriage is made up of good, hearty support people who believe more in you than you believe in yourself.